certainly Covington is a place of transcendence, a place to take you away from this world. Uh, we like to think about the Gothic as occurring around 1100, going all the way up to 1400 in different countries. And it's a development, like uh, organically. And during the Middle Ages, we develop into a cruciform church plan. Um, there's a desire for greater height. There's a desire for the ceiling to be vaulted, uh, to be vaulted, to be curved, and to be made out of stone or brick rather than b wood beams. And so the Gothic really is um, the, a high point of the development of this desire to make things uh, vertical, uh, often the proportions of the width of the nave, in this case is 34, the height is more than double that. Uh, we saw that last week also with St. Pat's in New York. Um, and this emphasis on making everything, you could say fireproof, or making everything solid on the inside. And uh, so we have the idea of the basilica, but now it's cruciform, it's getting more complicated, we're getting more colonnettes, and we're getting these... Um, these uh, groin bolts or uh, these, these uh, X bolts in the ceiling. And um, then there are other things that happen. Uh, we think about the flying buttresses. Well, the flying buttresses are taking the wall and, or, or it's kind of like, um, you know, um, someone holding something up or uh, uh, um, like the, the pyramid at the football game, you know, there are people down below holding up the smaller uh, cheerleaders at the top. And so the flying buttresses are like the guys on the bottom holding up somebody at the top. And the flying buttresses are holding up the wall, and that allows us to get a bigger glass. Why do we want bigger glass? Well, we want the and but we also want the images from the stained glass. So this is the development of stained glass in the Middle Ages, and that's um, great. And then um, the other thing we don't find in the early churches is this integration of towers. So at first we build a, ta a, ta a freestanding tower. We build a freestanding tapestry. Then we bring them to the church, to the cathedral, and they, be in they become integrated in the, in the Gothic cathedral. Sometimes you'll have two towers on the facade, on the front, and you might even have a tower in the crossing right at the, at the middle of the cross. So um, unfortunately, those were things that they, you could say, ran out of money in Covington, so it doesn't have the towers. Uh, the Gothic is really a development of lots of things over hundreds of years and many architects. Um, but think of it as a stone architecture, a vaulted architecture, pointed arches, and very tall. In America, the Germans really take over for stained glass production. Uh, near the end of the 19th century and the early 20th century. And the majority that I've seen of stained glass in America is from a, a couple of big studios in Germany. Meyer of Munich is still around. And there's a number of other very fine, uh, Zettler, some very fine German firms. And we imported the stained glass because they did it really well. Now, things that are interesting to point out about the stained glass in Covington there's a lot of window, a lot of, um, and, the, and the windows are divided by little muntins, little mullions that are made out of stones. Very fancy, very expensive. Um, but these are really much bigger than you'll find in most. The walls are more glassy than you'll find in most European cathedrals. I mean, and the other point is, not only are they, there's more glass, but there's more uh, light glass. This is a brighter church than most European cathedrals, more, most French cathedrals. There's a lot of white glass that lets actual light in. And then the scenes are more for the modern taste in the sense that you can see what's going on from far away. There's a lot of great French and English stained glass. You'd have to get up very close to tell who the saints are. They're very small. So that's an interesting development. 1895, we're talking 500 years, 600 years since the development of stained glass. And uh, the stained glass has developed into being bigger and brighter and also more uh, natural light coming in. So the famous window there in the north transept is the, uh, as you know, the uh, Council of Ephesus. And there's a, there's, it's, it's one of the largest um, stained glass windows in America. 
and uh, the figures are very large. You can see them from far away, and there's mm-hmm. figures down below, and there's figures up above of this great um, uh, Council of Ephesus window. Our forebears, um, you know, even in the 19th century, certainly at St. Pat's in New York, had that sense that we're a, we've arrived, we may be poor, but we have faith, and we're going to stick to our faith. We love America, and we're going to proclaim the, the faith, and we're going to do that through a number of ways, but through architecture. <laughs> 